Hello, hello, daughters. So today we're going to review this uh, ovarian cyst adenoma. And, well, we will talk about what is this, uh, uh, what is the uh, 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 cyst, okay? As we can see the anatomy of the regular ovary, we can see how it's a, a small uh, part of the, at the end of the fallopian tube. And on the other side, we can see how is the, the ovarian tumor or the kist, which is uh, growing up in this part. And this is a review about this uh, ovarian cystodenoma uh, updating on June 29th of this year. Okay, so the first thing is uh, that we have to say what is an ovarian uh, cyst? What is a, a, a cyst? which is, it, it means to be a sac which is filled even with the liquid or semi-liquid material that it's growing up or that arises in an ovary. As we can see, we have the different uh, view about a normal ovary, which is about this size, and the sac that is growing in this part. Could be very round or can be in a different shape. And well, this uh, cyst generally develops from the epithelial ovarium and all those cells that are covering the outer surface of the ovary. As we can see, this is the surface, the outside uh, surface of this ovary, and most of those are, will, are going to be part of those epithelial cells, or as we call them, epithelial tumors. The frequency about them will be the 60 to 70 percent, and uh, the ages uh, about this uh, presentation it's about 20 years old, and most of them will be serious mucinous or endometriosis. The most common are the serious one, and just remember they come from the uh, surface of the outer uh, walls of the <coughs> ovary. We can uh, classify these uh, cystodenomas as either functional or neoplastic. This uh, neoplastic uh, cysts are uh, like these examples, which the ones we talked about before, those ones that comes from the surface, or the other ones that comes from the germ cell tumors. And those that we consider like binning lesions come from the non-neoplastic, which are the functional or pathologics. We have very different kind of them. These, uh, when we talk about the neoplastic ovarian seeds, we can uh, think about two options. They can be benign or malignant. And of course, the, prognos the prognosis about them will be the difference. And when we talk about these uh, 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 cystodenomas or, or tumors in the in the ovary, we can think about just a simple cyst or hemorrhagic cyst, uh, endometrioma, mature cystic teratoma, or any other cysts uh, that which will be possibly malignant. So the difference will be here to define whether it is benign or it is malignant. And even the, the, the pictures look like very, very uh, big one or very uh, like different or something. Uh, some of them are not really malignant. It's, uh, it's not about the, the, the size or how it looks, but about how it works. <clears throat> okay. As we can, as we said, most of those uh, ovarian tumors, as we just saw in the in the last picture, they look very big and very, uh, but they are not uh, malignant. Most of the of the tumors are benign. Most of these cystodenomas are benign, so that's a, a, the, the good thing. And we have several types of these uh, benign uh, epithelial tumors, including the the Brennan tumors, like these tumors that we have here, and. As, as we can see, this is our, the, the side of the coffee bean, is, as we can see, like this part. That's why they'll call it like this. And uh, 
Well, today that we were talking about this ovarian cystadenoma, we know that this is a, a, a benign type of ovarian epithelial tumor. Remember we said that most of them come from the epithelial uh, uh, layers. And this is one of the most common, the benign mucinous syntodenoma of the ovary. As we can see again, we can see the, the regular ovary in this part, and here we can see the difference uh, showing us a uh, cystodenoma of this ovary. Okay, and as I told you, these serous cystodenomas account for most of the commonest uh, type of ovarian epithelium nosoplasmans, about the 60%. And the thing is, they are not. Uh, malignant, so that's uh, the good news. The good news, and uh, like the example on the left, we can see this is an unicolor uh, with a very thin wall cyst that contain uh, the liquid is very clear, is very uh, white, and <clears throat> is very smooth. And on the other side, on the right uh, picture, we can see this uh, tumor uh, that can be really really big as you can see this small ruler it's only four centimeters and as we can see the tumor can grow really really big okay the clinical presentation for these histodenomas is uh, mostly most of them will be asymptomatic it means our women will not feel anything but the only thing it's it's growing up as we saw in the in the before, it can uh, uh, it can grow like really really big, and the thing will be when it is growing out so so badly, then it's going to push all the other uh, <coughs> uh, organs inside the abdomen. As we can see, it's really really huge, and it's uh, practically filling all the abdomen. As we can see in this part or pushing even the vertebras and all all the all the organs inside the abdomen right this is this is an example of a right ovarian serous cystadenoma it's it's a, it's a girl only 11 years old and of course the only uh, symptom she will have is the she was having a abdominal distension as we can see because the the tumor was growing out like really really big Okay, and of course this uh, 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 cystic abdominal uh, pelvic mass is filling the entire abdomen. Okay, well, the location well they can be in either, either uh, left ovary, right ovary, or both in them. Like in the fifteen percent of cases, we can find two kisses. Uh, cyst in the in the ovaries, but usually it's uh, only one. Like seven, say eighty-five percent of the cases will be an only one kiss, but we must uh, consider that they can happen in both. It, they could be bilateral. Okay, when we talk about the macroscopic appearance, we are going to say that these serous cystadenomas are usually composed of unicular or multicular cyst filled with clear weathery fluid, okay? The, the characteristic is that this fluid is really, really clear. And as we can see in this um, picture, we, we see the septations, or how it is cutting with different septations. They can be very thin, like in this part, or very thick, like in this part, very, very uh, thick. And we can see the, the wall that is uh, focal, focaling in this part, and the solid components are, are, are the flow or the fluid of this one. Of course, we will have low risk and high risk. And uh, of course, the, the treatment should be uh, under uh, specialists, uh, mostly the oncologic gynecologist that will be asking for the, the good quality of the, of the studies. When we talk about the macroscopic appearance, well, these uh, cystadenomas are usually composed, as we said, as the for unicular or multiculars, and they will still, as we said, the the water the fluid in some of them. 
the the lining of the uh, the seeds generally could be flat, like as we can see here, is totally flat, or we can sow these papillary projections, as we can see, they are projecting. Okay, so this one is flat in this part, flat, and and the other we can see the papillary projections. And as we uh, said before, the dimension or the size of these uh, seeds could be really, really huge. As we can see, 26 to 30 kilograms, we can see how it goes all over the abdomen. And it can really be a huge kist. How can we imagine that the woman would not... Uh, think about he has a, a big big stomach problem okay now when we talk about the microscopic appearance well we will talk about the solitary layer of a benign epithelium that resembles the fallopian tube mucosa and may form papillary structures okay and uh, we, we can find here the single layer and the epithelium lining with the papillary pattern, as we say. Also, we can find this kind of uh, somatous calcification that can be a, a, fe a feature. We, we should look for this. And, okay, how are we going to help us uh, uh, find out what is the, the, the tools that we are going to use to make our diagnose, well, when we use the ultrasound, usually we can see this as unicular cystic aneoic adnexalation. Okay, we can see his the uterus is in this part, and this is the right ovary. And as we can see, because it it has fluid like liquid, we can see like very dark. Okay, and we are looking for the kist in, in this part. It's a simple foam cyst. In this part, yes. Okay. We can find the septations. Remember, we can have uh, very tiny and very thick uh, septations, and we can see how it the septation is in this part. Okay, the keys is all of this, and the septations are shown in this part. We can also use the CT, CT scanner, and again, they, it's going to show us the unicular or morticular cyst uh, with the homo homogeneous attenuation. They will have or not as a wall or septum, and <clears throat> sometimes a vegetation outside. Okay. In this part, we can see the multimer cysts. On all, on all these pictures and as we said when we are looking at the city we can uh, show how it is really really big we can see all the structures in this part and the abdominal uh, organs that are displaced because of the, the the size of the tumor and it's practically in the whole abdomen part yes we can see how it is filling up the abdomen. We can uh, we have different types of T1 that it's a uh, hypotens or the T2 which is hypertens. We can see how it is very very hypertens. And <clears throat> after uh, we use the contrast, uh, then we can uh, see how it, the 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 wall it's uh, showing up after the contrast. We are looking at the walls. Okay. <clears throat> well, what, talking about the treatment and the prognosis of these uh, overseas, as we said at the beginning, most of them are benign. So the the treatment sometimes is just will be maybe the the surgery and the prognosis. Is, most of the times, it's a, it's a it's a good prognosis. Okay. Our surgical options will include the resection uh, of the of the ovary or, or even only the the cyst. 
And as we can see in this uh, picture, this is a cystadenoma before they are going to remove it. As we see, it's a really, really uh, large uh, cyst. And of course, these cystadenomas will not recur following the oophorectomy. We will remove it totally. Of course, we had to have differential diagnosis, uh, including those ovarian cysts, which are small lesions, which are different. Uh, like for example, the corpus luteum cyst, follicular cyst, okay, which are the uh, differential diagnosis for these uh, ovarian cystadenomas. Okay, thank you and see you in the Zoom. Bye bye.